Okay, everybody uh, pick a square. And uh, what we're going to show you here is actually part of the extrusion technique. You've probably seen my board out there. It's the one you see over here. It says KG, KJ and DC on it. It's uh, the same technique I used to make these panels. Um, but in Alpha, I started doing this with just uh, regular microvoxels because I wanted, you know, something to make my door jams not look like so square and ugly. So I started experimenting with uh, attaching stuff to the floor. And actually, the first thing I made was this cross. It was on um, our Cowboys and Aliens build. And um, so we're going to learn on how to do that one tonight. A couple of other applications real quick. Uh, you can see here around a door jam you can attach it to. The back side you can attach anything to it. Uh, voxels will not distort it as long as you stay on the back side of it. If you put it on the front side of course it will distort it because it is a micro voxel essentially. And uh, these pan I call them panels, just like my board panels. Um, you know, I also make chains out of these panels, different ones. Here's the thinnest one I make over here to the left. Uh, I have some really, really big ones. And um, you can see some of those on our Landmarkians uh, build. You can see on gallery. It's the one that's power is knowledge. And mark in two. But anyway, I will show you how to do this. First, um, everybody just pick a square and take a regular voxel. Place the regular voxel somewhere up in face height. And we're just going to make a regular micro voxel. So you just take your smooth tool and smooth this thing down to a desirable size. Uh, three, three or four times without the uh, control is fine. Once you've smoothed that down, copy it up. Then here's the part hey, where you, you paste this thing down and you keep it so you can see it above the floor. I made a boob. So you want the floor to attract to the micro voxel. If you want to see the first step, you can see it over here in my circle here. And the ground pulls up because the micro voxel is smaller than voxel size, so it's attracting everything to it when it's placed second. And filling up the when you do, once you've done this, uh, start welding this. Go down or left or right, whichever direction. Just follow the same direction. Go like um, four times. So move one, click it down, move one, click it down, move one, click it down. Once you've uh, done a desirable length, Just take your selection tool and highlight the floor behind it. Not the actual voxel that's up in air, just the floor. And then use your add tool and add behind it. This is going to extrude everything down to the floor. And now you made your panel. Now you can copy this thing out just that top part above the floor you can put it up in the air now you can also weld with this part if you don't want to make the actual panel on the floor um, you can also just weld with it
So if we're going to make that door jam jam over there, uh, we are going to, of course, turn it on the side. And weld it together. When you do this, it's going to stretch. So just like when you're welding regular microvoxels, you want to go back to your previous weld and weld it down again. When you go back again, you're going to get a nice and smooth, sharp corner. And now I'm going to put the blending technique that we just learned to work on this. I'm going to apply the paint colors. It actually might make a really cool pattern because I see there's a, a stretched diamond shaped voxel going on in there on the surface. Paint my two lumicytes and then and then blend them together. It's freaking amazing. <laughs> this is like my new tool, my new favorite thing. Yes, it was just a microvoxel that he used to pull up the floor tile. Uh, he shrunk a regular... I'll, I'll repeat it. You can actually see. He took a regular voxel and selected it and smoothed it without holding down control till it was a good size, but not, you know, so small you can't see it anymore. Really, the, the smaller you make it, you're going to get a little sharper angle. It's the really only the difference. And then you just paste it down on the floor, and you select it, and use the Add tool. And the add tool flattens out the bottom part. Right. <laughs> Whoops. Now that's one time I actually don't want blending because <laughs> I don't want people to be able to see it. Uh, the selection tool. That was bad of me. Okay, the selection tool in the add tool takes the bottom four corners of that voxel and stretches them out. So, yeah, exactly. And then you take, I, I think building an area is actually affecting people next to you. We need to bug report this if everybody could, because um, I'm getting my stuff undone by other people hitting Control-Z, which if they ever want to have like guild claims and stuff like that, they need to make that not happen. So I'll bug report that after this. Yeah, and then you, you just pick up that part, the tinier your microvoxel, the sharper that is, and you can use all kinds of voxels to do this, because really all you're doing is expanding the bottom two corners to make them voxel size. Um, but the benefit is, you can end up with a nice shape on the top, but it will sit flat on any floor or uh, any stretched, stretched voxel surface. It won't stretch that either, but it, nothing does. And they can also go on each other, if you notice here. They can they can attach to each other. You have yeah, I've been getting weird stuff all day. So I'm just gonna make some more gradient here on my I'm gonna make a rainbow arch. still don't like the lumicite green though. Even if I can blend it, I still think it's ugly. So I put my various uh, colors that I want to have blend together. 
except for the new worked textures because it will not blend those. And again I go to stone, pick a desert cavern texture from those and just place it between the two textures I want to have blend. And a nice way to get this particular shape to connect to the floor at the ends because it's a point and it's a slope so it doesn't really want to is you get a blob of voxel putty and you just put it on the floor between the two of them. And that'll square off the bottom and make it a pyramidal point. Well, as doorways go, that is not the most menacing one ever. <laughs> if you don't know what voxel putty is, it's basically um, you take healed or unhealed ground, just as long as it's procedural ground of some sort, you insert your selection volume so that it goes... I always tell people to go at least three deep because you never know what you put on the wall and what you've, you know, if you did an inlay somewhere and forgot about it um, this would alter the effect so you don't want to definitely don't want to do the surface and I also don't recommend just going too deep but you go three deep, you paint it, do not add, paint and then you move your selection box in to where you're grabbing the voxel that's furthest into the wall. Copy with control C and then you'll have something called voxel putty. It's a voxel that doesn't obey the rules when it comes to deformation so I can put it right on top of things and if, it, if I put it directly in a voxel it's going to paint it without deforming it. If I put it near another voxel it's going to form to that voxel and the voxel I put it on will not deform. Basically what's happening here is you're toggling the air from being invisible to visible whatever color you painted your ground. <laughs> My little pony doorway. Yeah, you could turn those towards each other. It just formed that way because that's the way the the easiest voxel putty is lazy it always wants to find the easiest way to connect things so if I wanted to make those face a different direction I would just copy it paste it but you're gonna get a twist there that's the only problem so you'd probably have to do a little more editing on it well, that looked kinda cool when it was backwards Alright, so we could probably move to the next technique, but yeah, you could definitely connect these. Um, I would again use voxel putty to do it. I actually build backwards now. So I'd take the frame that I wanted to put in between them. Let's say I wanted to put this in between. Okay, so I think that's in the right position, but it's probably not. Uh, no, you didn't fail, Nerdo. You're just at the step where you have to highlight the floor. So if you highlight the floor behind your uh, stick of microvoxels, and then use your add tool with anything 
behind on the floor. So you just want to add material to the floor under it. So you want to make a big selection around it. You do not want the microvoxels that you welded above the floor to be highlighted, just the floor. So as an example, if you highlight from this red to over here, if you drag your selection tool from those two red points, and then use your add tool on that selection, it's going to extrude that microvoxel stick that you made down to the floor. There you go. Now you got your panel right there. You can copy that panel up out of there. Not the floor, just the, just that top part that's still up and above the floor. This thing's hideous, and I love it. And that's how you can actually build um, a really easy, simple connection. <laughs> oh my god, that's so hideous. What have I made? <laughs> So now you could apply that to a doorway as an example. You can also weld the whole thing on the floor. If you know the how big the floor is, <laughs> know, know how big your uh, door jam is, then you can just weld it on the floor before you weld it. So the thing you got right here, you put that up and say if you, so we pretend to make a doorway right here. Big doorway. Actually, we can just make a big window. So you can take your shape, your panel, and you can just apply it all the way around. And every time you go to an edge, it's going to stretch across. What you do is you just go back to that previous paste. Bit and paste it down one more time in order to put it back where it belongs. Just like how you correct a microvoxel welding, it's the same. It takes the shape of the last operation applied to it. Yeah, I'll show you again. Put down the first one. Turn it. I'm going to go horizontal here. Again, we're going in order to fix that stretching there. I'm just going to go back, paste it down again. Quite like that gap in between, actually. Like, I think that actually looks neat. That would make a cool window, a uh, picture frame. I mean, like that would be the title, you know. Paint it gold. You can also, if you. Just make one side, one corner, I mean. You just copy that side and turn it. Whichever you think is easiest. You can even leave the gap there. 
that's a nice window frame you can make. Um, next, I can show you how to make the cross. Again, you just make your micro voxel. Yeah, this is a, a new thing he's teaching here. It's really the same, the same, same way. Process, I just want to yeah. show you if you do it on the floor. So if you draw out your pattern on the floor. It's pretty simple. Everybody knows how to make a cross. When you get, every time you make a turn, if it stretches across, just go back, go forward twice. Because you want to get, get away from where it was stretching. So if I go back here again, it's just going to stretch again. So I'm going to go back once to make it straight again, and then go out. It's like you take a two two step forwards, one back. <laughs> or when you're done, you can just alternatively go back and put dots over all the spots that got out of shape, just in that spot. But it's actually a little easier once you get used to it to roll your mouse wheel around and just do it that way. So how do we make your the the cross design here? Okay, let's see. Yeah, you just basically draw it out. Don't move your mouse. Let's keep changing that translate. Draw it out. You can make a crooked cross like me, because you can't count. It's a good idea to make it um, everything three voxels wide, because if you don't, then you can run into a situation where you're going to have an angle. I think uh, that won't you can't space out. Once you've drawn your cross, again, just highlight the background. Use your add tool. There's your cross. Great for when you're making a church, if you're making a town or something like that. You can also make different windows, make them look different like that. If you just use your imagination when you're building it, and then you might come up with a nice design just by welding stuff around. Mistakes make great discoveries. Or you can make it a little pond. Okay. Just actually leave it All in right, the ground. So, so, if you wanted to apply this to your church wall you just pick that flat side that we extruded down to the, to the floor and be careful not to grab the floor under it it's easy it's really easy to do that and then once you've done that you can just cut out the middle here if you want to put light through it you can actually also take a stained glass and put that in and make that show so the cross will actually be as I don't have one on me but you can actually make the insides look like stained glass so you just gotta make it big enough to cover the, the whole area alternatively when you've got it on the ground you can heal around it on the southeast sides and just you're going to have to pick it up and paste it down again a couple times and pick up the whole ground around it. 
And what that'll do is it'll make your cross actually be surrounded by earth, which means the center will be solid, the part that it's you've drawn with that sticks up is two voxels, that's all solid. Um, and so you'll have kind of a an reverse inlay, I guess. If you, you have to heal at the southeast side only because the southeast corner deformation bug will cause you problems. Can also show you real quick on how to make my chains over here. It's done exactly the same way, except we're going to do one slight deviation from the weld. Can actually use the one that's right here. So once you weld down your panel, I suggest that when you make these um, chains, make sure you have at least one voxel in between when you're gonna when you're gonna make the chain. So if you want to make your panel in four voxels, this one's five. So we're gonna cut this one up a little bit. We're just gonna take this thing right here. There you go. This one's four. So this is kind of thin, so you just want to go one of the sides and make it a little bit thicker. Then copy that part. Now I got a thick panel. And just keep the flat side on the inside at all times. That way you won't have an issue with welding. If it's too, if rotating is too tricky, um, you can just rotate it once and mirror all the other parts. So, here's a little trick because, you know, you could copy this whole ring and just turn it, paste it inside, and then repair it. Because pasting without air is really terrible. It is not as good as doing it in the ground. So if you took one of these rings, and put it in the ground and heal the earth around it you could basically make a giant chain in just minutes because our paste without air is really faulty it's really flawed <laughs> yeah. it works if you're facing to the southwest with your object but not if it's a 3d object and it still deforms it on the bottom so so if you make bigger chains, then you can also make it pull to the sides. Like I said, if you want to see it, go to the Landmarkians build. And then you can uh, see it there. i got a lot of chains that are pulling sides. So they're holding up a big crust of... Well, actually, they're preventing a big crust of Earth flying into space. Islands. But you're going to lag, so you've been warned. Yeah, don't have uh, physics going there because uh, you'll get one, fr one frame a second. And uh, what's nice about these is that, again, like you saw over on there on the mock-up, you can put anything on the inside that won't deform. It looks like the texture looks like it's deforming but that's just the textures textures adjusting they're really not deforming should also be able to stack these you can see my Brazier's 
around here, they I also use the same technique right in the middle of it. I just take a regular voxel. It's a pole that goes up, and then I just basically decorate it with those panels all the way around. So it just doesn't look square and dullish. I did make some nice uh, furniture out, some shelving, bookshelves and stuff like that, but I deleted it. So I can't show that right now, but... You can do some pretty neat stuff that doesn't look too square with these panels. Did not put them on the extrusion board that you see over there, because it's such a, a simple thing to make. So there's really no reason to put it on a board. Looks great, puzzle. Now, if you uh, put that on a big wall and hold everything out, and then jammed in some stained glass in between there, that would look epically good. I don't know how big you can make those things, though. <laughs> If you, if you get them angled just right, you can actually sit them so they look like they're sitting on top of each other at 90 degree angles, but you have to kind of get them in the right position, which can be a little tricky, but once you figure out how they